chapter 12. <clears throat> when you see in the scriptures in this verse the word righteous, um, be aware that the Lord is speaking to you of your soul. It's not a, you know, we, we pin laurels on people because of their accomplishments. It ain't so with God like that. What's the only part of you that's going to be righteous? What is righteous? Your soul. Your precious soul. Did you know that thing was stamped with the Ten Commandments? Not, not the law, not the letter of the law, but when God originally made man, you still have traces of that in you. It's a blooming mess because you don't know what to do with it. But in the fall, we lost it. And um, that's why all this stuff enters in. That's why we do things not for the right reason. I wish I could quit doing that. <laughs> but isn't that amazing that you're born with that, but it's confused? It, don't, it doesn't know how to handle it. And when Jesus Christ comes into the picture, everything begins to change. <clears throat> the gospel engages you. It challenges you. And it is that which is recovering that perfect image of God. We are predestinated to be conformed to the image of God's own. That's what Jesus Christ, that's what Jesus Christ did. And you have been destined to be conformed to that image, to change. And you realize that there's a part of you that's never going to change. When, when they throw that dirt in my face, I'll be rid of this. But my righteous soul, there ain't no need you shedding a tear. You, Jesus said, weep for yourselves. That's what he told the daughters of Jerusalem. At the day he was going to be in paradise. And there was a thief going to be with him. What was the righteous part of that thief? That was when his soul bowed to the image of God. This verse right here, verse 26, in the way of righteousness is what? Did I tell you 12? Proverbs 12? Huh? Yeah. In the way of righteousness. 28. Did I say 26? Well, you understand I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> I have an excuse, John. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, brother. I did. Thank you. In uh, verse 28. Well, you 26 is good, too. <laughs> the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Uh, and the way of the wicked seduceth them. So you understand that what is it about you? It's be I'm better than all these people out here. A righteous soul. That's not a person boasting itself. That's, that's a person that's recovering the image of God. Bowing to it. That's a righteous man. That's a righteous soul. The slothful man uh, roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of the diligent man is precious. In the way of righteousness is life. Presenting your soul to God. As simple as that. What are you going to give God? What's God want? Forrest Gump said, I'm not a smart man. But I know who God is. Hallelujah. 
God wants your soul. That's the only part of you that's eternal. That's the divine part that God, that no other creature has. Not another creature was ever made in the image of God but you. You're eternal. Forever. You will spend an eternity of bliss in what you can't even begin to imagine. If all of this is this great and this much glory that God lends it, what is eternity with Him when we shall be like Him? You're like in an eggshell getting ready to come out. So the gospel is a restoration. You know, if, if you buy an old house and you want to renovate it, <laughs> you start tearing out. And what does the gospel do to you in a lot of times? Yeah, well, every time I've ever heard it, it tore me down. It got rid of the old and the new is brought in. So that's restoration. It being brought back to the image of God. Did you think it was going to be easy? Did you believe the lie that this is easy believism? That you made it to the altar? You took the dreaded walk down the aisle and now God says everything's all right? Or did you believe that your life was now changing. I knew if God ever saved me that I was going to I was going to lose the old life. I just before I was saved, I just wasn't willing to let go of it. And and I haven't been willing either now except that God pries it loose. That's what the gospel does. Look at Proverbs 23 while we're here. And if you're going to have dealings with God, if you're going to worship Him, if you're going to enter into sanctification, that's a mighty big word, Jackson. If God's going to purify your thoughts, if He's going to present the precious image of His Son, the only way He's going to engage with you is if you bring your soul to Him. Not your tithes. Not your best dudes. Not the group that you're with. But your soul. That honest part of you. That's more important than anything else in this world. One soul in this room is worth more than this entire world. Just one. That's what Jesus said. Isn't that amazing? That your soul must engage with Him. Look at this verse here, verse number 26. If I can get the right one, John Smith. My son, give me thine heart. That word there is soul. What's God want? Wants your soul. And let thine eyes observe any ways. My ways. Hallelujah. So, just because God does things that I don't like, that I'm not liking this, the way this is going, what should I do? Conform to Jesus. Did Jesus do His Father's will? You understand who we're talking about. Is the same one that Jesus said, I always do His will. There, there had to be a man that passed through this world that when he said, foxes in the deserts have holes, birds of the air have nests, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He was poorer than you will ever be. God Himself had to have enough humility, not just to for pardon your sin, but so that God could actually forgive you. 
that God himself could blot your sin out because of the humility in this man. And God, it even went further than that. And God was well pleased with the humility of him that he forgave sin and he saved this world because he offered his soul. You think I'm kidding? Look at John 15, verse number 16. I ain't a kidding with you, Elijah. I ain't a kidding with you now. <laughs> John 15. Well, God's so good to us. Uh, Mary, you'll enjoy this. Mike told me, he, he said, there ain't nothing else like God's people. He said, nobody else in the world is like them. They're always the same. That's a pretty good compliment. That I am what I am. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. In uh, John 15, somewhere around verse number 16, <clears throat> Jesus said in verse 15, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord uh, doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard of my Father, I've made known unto you. Now, what was he doing? He's presented his soul to God the Father. And it, you understand, God ain't going to engage with you <laughs> until you offer him your precious soul. It's undivided attention. Are you listening to me? This right here is going to be one of the most important things you ever do. I, I may never preach to you again, but you need to get this. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and uh, bring forth fruit, that your uh, fruit should remain, and that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you now. Well, I'm glad I, somebody needs to go get my glasses. <laughs> um, God said that whatsoever you ask, He would give it you. It's in the console. Um, how are you going to get God to do what you want Him to? What are you going to have to do for you asking? He's not going to engage with you. You're going to have to offer Him your soul. That inner part of you where you talk to yourself and you say what you're going to do and what you ain't going to do and the old devil gets in there and he tweaks with you and pulls at you. And you devise your plan all along the way. And God keeps throwing stuff in the way. And you keep falling. Jack went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I, I, I tell you, God is so good to us. Y'all look, the preacher's wife's fixing to make that dreaded trip. <laughs> Boy, what a, what, what a good woman. Thank you, darling. I love you so much. There's not another one like you. <laughs> That's pretty good, Aunt Jackson. Guess who's eating good today? <laughs> hey, look at Matthew 7. So you understand that the engaging with God with your precious soul is the very key to asking God things. You... And, and dear soul, you're not going to want anything out of God's will. You're going to want what God wants. Uh, David said, I made a covenant with my eyes. He, David said, I swore against myself. Dear soul, when, when God tells you you're wrong, what do you say? Amen. <laughs> I mean, he, he's looking at your precious soul. In Matthew chapter number 7, look at here. As, as surely as you ask, you'll receive entrance. In uh, chapter 7, in verse number 7, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. 
For everyone that asketh receiveth. Now, dear soul, how, how much have you received? How much have you gotten lately? What have you offered God? It might as well hit you too. Why don't God do what I ask Him to do? One of you said last week, because we ask amiss. Help me, Jesus. So, un until your soul is offered, the conversation is pretty much futile. And then God's providence deals with you accordingly as a child of God to bring you into the kingdom. So it may be you that's standing in the way. <laughs> and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Why do you have to say all this? Or and, and, and you know how religion uses this. That see there, God is going to do everything for you. Everything's going to be great. Or what man is there of you whom if a son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, you rotten evil thing, you. Amen. That's what Jesus called us. He, he said, you being evil, if, if, if then you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children... How much, and nobody can do that better than you. <laughs> you ding dong. If, it, if your soul is not offered to God, you don't even know how to do that. How much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask Him? Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. If, dear, so if, if I've got preconceived ideas that God somehow owes me something, my soul is not on the altar. There ain't nobody's soul more valuable than what Jesus Christ was and what He offered. Look at Revelation chapter number 6. Well, I hope I get down to the place where I want to get down to. I sure miss Keaton. I sure do like picking on him. He takes it so good. Look at verse number 9 here. Righteous souls have been blooded. Righteous souls. Have been, how much sin does God forgive without the shedding of blood? Dear so all the animals that God had killed would blot out the sun right now. What that animal do? Nothing. God's serious about this. <laughs> about you being blooded with the lamb. That that sacrifice is your atonement. That's the only thing God recognizes. And, and recognizes that your soul is offered to Him. Whose hands you going to put it in? Yours? Ew. Look at verse number 9 right there. Listen. And when he had opened the fifth seal, that's what Jesus did. He went up to God and he said, Give me the little book. And, 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 and whenever the lamb is crucified and the blood is shed and you've been blooded, God begins to open the seals of that book. All right, here's the first chapter. Here's the second chapter. Here's the third chapter. This is the book of life. What you're reading is the life of Christ. And you've been blooded. And the only thing left for you to do is to offer God your precious soul. 
son. Hey, I, I, I know in the bottom of my heart, my soul, that God will accept nothing less. He wants it. I saw under the altar what? The souls, the righteous of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had. Dear so they, they learned to want the will of God in their life. And the image of Christ begins to appear. There's nobody else like them. And it's not them making their self look like an image that they just think is the way God looks. It's the very stamp, the seal of God that the Holy Spirit through the gospel is engaging your soul with and conforming you to that image. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? How many times, Mike Walker, have you said, Lord, when will you deal with them? When will you get them? When will you take this? Oh, my soul. Listen, God don't deal like that. God is making a righteous soul out of you that wants what God... If you're thinking in the terms of you, your soul ain't quite on the altar right there, and you asking God, how long before you fix this, Lord? And until that soul is offered to God, it's the hardest thing you'll ever do is drag it and lay it at the feet of God. I'm serious. Because... you. That flesh of yours wanting to run the show. I'm serious. I'm serious about this. You see how messed up it is that the flesh is wanting to call the shots and the most important thing in you is your soul. Your soul's the one that needs to be running the show and until it can run the show, it's got to be laid on God's altar and begin to cry out what God wants. Dear soul, I have to tell myself sometimes, just shut up. Shut up. Because we're influenced, we're easily taken by the devil. Easily. You're no match for him. And yet, if we resist him, he will flee. How do you resist him? You're doing it right now. You're hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're hearing that God wants your soul. He don't want part of you. He wants all of you. He's the one breathed that into you. And it's going back to Him. And it ain't going to be like it is now. It's going to be a straightened out. Boy, you talk about a day. And white robes were given unto every one of them. They see the righteousness of the saints, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. What? Well, bless your soul, until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Bear ye one another's burdens. Then you rest until your fellow servants have died the same death you got to die. You point them in the way of the cross. You show them the image of Christ. You bow your will to God's will. You offer your soul to God and you see what happens. And so every time I get out of God's way, it's like watching a big uh, D9 caterpillar coming. It, it works a whole lot better to let God do it. Woo, thank you, Jesus. What is, is, is Jesus... Uh, look at Mark 12. Let's leave the course and get on course. You want to? Matthew, uh, Mark. <laughs> Glasses ain't helping much, John. Oh, could you come up here and read these notes for me, brother? Could you help the old man, please? Could you take over for me? Come on, Clay, stand up, be a man. 
Verse number 41, And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and behold, how the people cast in money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in their much. You remember this morning when I said, Oh, Donald said, What's this in your Bible? He'll spot a check like that. <laughs> and cash even quicker. And I said, Oh, that's, that's my offering. And you know, you take it, have, have you ever felt like that? Or have you ever seen those that gave a lot more than you did? You know how this is used in the church, this scripture. That ain't even what this scripture is about. It ain't about you putting in the offering plate. They ain't never been one passed in this building. Lay your soul on the altar. Watch this. Right him. <clears throat> Where are we at? <laughs> 42. 42. I'm not kidding. <laughs> That's the sad part. Verse 42. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a fatherling. Dear soul, that's minimal. You wouldn't even bend over to pick it up. People used to fight you over a penny, Jackson, on the ground, because that was a piece of bubble gum. Not no more. I don't know why they even make them. <laughs> but that's what she put into play. And he called unto him his disciples, and he saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more than all they which cast into the treasury. For all they did cast of their abundance, but she of what she did... Well, um, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. What was it that the widow offered that they didn't offer? That's what God sees. That's what Jesus saw. He didn't see a person saying, well, uh, I made this, this, so I'm on. This ain't about the offering plate. <laughs> it's about what you're offering God of your precious soul. It's His. You, you got to trust Him with it. Look, in John 10, why was it that God loved Jesus? Why did He love Him? One of us had to do it. Let, what was it in Isaiah, my wife tells me? He offered him God his soul. He didn't hold it back. He was willing to do it. Just think about the most precious thing you've got. Will you give it to God? He loveth mother. Father, children, more than me is not fit for the kingdom of God. You don't love them if you don't put God in His proper place. I'm getting some amens, Jesse. I'm feeling kind of leprechaunish. <laughs> Amen. Boy, listen. The widow put it all she had. And now Jesus, He's fixing to show us something. In verse number 17 and 18, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. That's why He loved Him. 
No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. If you will lay your soul upon the altar, then you will take your life back. And that is why God loved him. I don't even wear socks anymore because that blowed mine off. <laughs> I'm man, this is good stuff. That what God requires, and 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 how many times I've asked amiss because I wasn't offering God my all. My, all of my soul, not part of it. Not, well, if I do this, I do this. Okay, let's calculate that. Blessed Jesus. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, you know, you know and I know that eventually when we come face to face with death, that's going to be the issue. Who are you going to trust your soul with there? What would the rich man in hell, he didn't even have a name, the beggar at the gates called Lazarus. We don't even know the rich man's name. He don't even got a heritage. He lived sumptuously in this life. He got to do it all while he was even on the wheel of fortune. Where is he now? And Lazarus is in Abraham's bosom. There's nothing more valuable than your soul. And there's no greater act of love for you to lay that thing down at Jesus' feet. Praise God. Uh, look at Genesis 22. Genesis 22. This is some more of the preacher's wife's preaching. Well, it's so good not to have to even think. Genesis 22. <clears throat> well, yeah. Verse 1, 2. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. I thought God don't tempt people. <laughs> he don't tempt them to do evil. In every situation, God's tempting you to do right. Whose fault is it when you do wrong? You didn't lay your soul down. Amen? You know, when you start feeling that anger coming up in there and you can't control it and it's going wild, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> well, I know what that's like. God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and now Abraham's ears was open. He said, Behold, here I am. <laughs> Do you hear God when He speaks? And He said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. God promised him this one son in the lineage of Christ and now says, bring me that boy. There's an old saying in the old church that says, God's telling you to lay your Isaac on the altar. Brother Gene told me several times, he said, when you hold this world, you better not have white knuckles. You better hold it with a loose grip. I quote him a lot because I've found that those words are true. He so you better hold this world loose. Because you don't know what today holds. 
There's another verse here I want you to look at before we go. It's down in verse number 8. And we know what Abraham did. We know that he laid him on the altar. And Abraham said, My son, God, when he, he wanted to know where the sacrifice was, Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb. God's going to offer the soul of his own son, his lamb. That's the widow's dot. Hey, we got some old sayings now, and y'all need to put these in your repertoire. Don't forget the widow's might. Don't forget the widow's might. And what Jesus said, she put in everything she had, she put her soul in it. And I like that. So they went, both of them, together. You know that Isaac was a grown man? He wasn't no little boy. He was old enough he could have resisted Abraham. <laughs> they both got in on this offering. <laughs> How many times have you thought with God what it was going to require only to find that God took it another way and worked it out? But you were willing. Stephen's fixing to be stoned to death and he told those Jews and, and Saul that was holding the papers to have him stoned that later became Paul. He said, you do always resist. You do always resist. The gospel. You do always resist God's way. Told them the whole story, the whole lineage. And they were so enraged by the truth. Because see, while the gospel's being preached, you know that God's tugging at your soul. And, and, and you know, there's part of you saying, well, I can't do that yet. I've got my life to live. No, you don't. That's God's soul. You might need somebody to revive you side the road, hadn't you, Mary? You might be dead. And God says not yet. God wants your soul. He ain't a God, and you can't engage with Him until you do. Not in the fullness. Hallelujah. Look at Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Jackson, I couldn't wait to get down here and preach this, buddy. And I, I figured by now everybody would be dancing. Look at them. Whose stomach's that growling? <laughs> you just got sold out, Melissa. Hebrews 12. I didn't hear it. I was just cutting up. <clears throat> verse number 15. Looking up. Well, verse 14. Boy, the Lord hammered this one on me this morning. He said, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, if, if you're going to do that right there, Ben, you're going to have to offer your soul to God, but <laughs> I'm serious, Elijah. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. He was so hungry. He, he was so famished that the promise of God didn't mean enough to him to hang on to it. 
He was not willing to offer God his soul. Watch. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He refused to engage his soul with God. We know that Jacob was a deceiver. He was, his name means a heel snatcher. He was a twin in his mama's womb and there was two nations struggling in her and when she asked God what was going on, he said, there's two nations in your belly and they're fighting. And the elder, the firstborn that's supposed to get all the rights is going to serve the younger. That's how the God's order in there. Oh, that can't be. That's God's order. You're so God's order is God's order. And if God, it, the first Adam came into the world, he had the earmarks of the commandments of God all over him. It was the greatest. He was the only man ever put, ever created that had that moment with God until Jesus Christ came into the world, the younger, the last Adam, and we shall serve him. You offer your soul to Jesus. Offer your soul to Jesus. I like my soul in Jesus' hands. Because I wasn't using it anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was making a mess out of it. Thank you, Jesus. God's so good to us, y'all. Oh, cast your soul. Look, let's, let's look at Matthew 10 and we'll try to finish up. Matthew Great day. I went all the way to Daniel, John. If I hadn't had my glasses, I wouldn't have known it. <laughs> Is that Mr. Magoo? <laughs> oh, let's see. What's God going to do if you don't cast your soul into heaven? The kingdom of God cometh without observation, it's within. Who you gonna offer your soul? You gonna offer your soul to God or the devil, one or the other? That's what we do. Man's gonna worship something. He said, "I'm an atheist." Yeah, well, you you can worship a, a chihuahua then. That's what you gonna do. <laughs> you gonna worship something? You know, Brother Harold don't even watch the Braves no more. I'm telling you, the world's falling apart. Matthew 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear Him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You say, see there, Brother Mike, we're all going to have a body. Even in hell, the grave is known as hell. The righteous are going to be raised. With what body do they come? The one Jesus will give them. <laughs> I ain't going to hurt no more. I'm not going to be sad no more. I'm going to worship God. As never before. I will re I, my soul will be like God intended it to be. And how important is it that if all this life, all this tribulation was necessary to even make you think about it? To make you understand how, how many things have I asked God that He said He would do? All I had to do was ask. Well, why ain't, why ain't God doing anything? Those words are not just put in there so that you can leave it laying there and dust fall on it. They're there to use. And I promise you, I promise you, because I love you, that if you don't offer your soul, your whole heart in it, if you, 
It's the spirit you're of. What spirit are you of when you do that? That's what the disciples said, Lord, you want us to call down fire on them? We'll fry them right up for you. He said, you know not what spirit you're of. This is about the glory of God. Not mine and yours. Thank you, Jesus. Cast my soul into heaven. Boy, that... Mm. Look at... Uh, as I promise we're closing right in here. Mm. You remember what Jesus said? When he said, you ain't getting out of here until you've paid the uttermost fatherling. You got you to gotta put that last quarter in your pocket in the plate. <laughs> your soul. Give God your soul. I like it when God's in the room, don't you? I like it when God's in the gospel. I like it when I get real quiet. And the church said, Amen. Where you can hear that small, still voice. And that's God. See, God don't carry on like I do. <laughs> But I, I, get, I can't help it. I just get excited. I'm sorry about that. What did I tell you, Second Peter 2? I didn't. What did I tell you? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> just think how bad it would have been without the glasses. <laughs> A brain don't even work with them. <clears throat> I thought I was getting somewhere. <clears throat> Verse number 6 of chapter 2. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensamples unto them that should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man. Stick that in your noodle. That every time you see that righteous man, that's one of God's people. I don't see how Lot made it in. You know what's written to him in this book. It's right here on the pages of God's book. We call it incest. That righteous man that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds did you know that the devices of the wicked and Satan is, the brother said it before he got down, he said, what's killing them is saving you. It's hard to imagine the further you go into the gospel and the more you see of Jesus Christ and His righteousness, and the more you offer of yourself to Him, pleading for His help, how wicked this world really seems to you. And it's, it's not just old folks, you know, that, oh, you messed our world up. The world's been messed up since Cain killed Abel. Don't build you no houses here. Put your treasure in heaven. Hey, Jane, what's the most important thing you got? Precious soul. And you got a precious one. Ain't God good? Brother, you got a song for us?
I bet you can't believe it just ends like that, can you? But y'all sure do get happy. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen.